Bill Ackman sits down with the New York Fed over coffee and Danish. He put together a seven slide solution, PowerPoint presentation, and gave his perspective on why we should raise interest rates. So now hedge fund managers got access to the central bankers who set monetary policy in this country. It's very interesting. Let's get into it. I'm just a girl, a wonderful girl, I'm the sweetest one in town. You can search for miles around and no one like me can be found. I've got a smile, a wonderful smile, in a certain little way. Every time the boys get near me, they look at me and say, Red Hot Mama, Red Hot Mama, you're the one we need. Red I think this is an interesting story. Uh, Bill Ackman met with the New York Fed and told them to begin uh, the rate raising process. He even put together a PowerPoint presentation, seven side solution, printed out on my desktop for the Fed. So I guess if you're a billionaire, you get access to central bankers and some Danish and coffee. So what does Bill Ackman want now? You know, hey, the Pershing uh, Square uh, Capital CEO who recently presented his case on inflation uh, to the New York Fed has obviously, folks, hedged his bets, hedged that portfolio to benefit from, you know, higher interest rates which uh, is the main tool the Fed can use to combat inflation, or they can try. So, you know, who is Bill Ackman? I've known about this guy for a while, but uh, kind of look at the checkered past, it's interesting. Uh, number one, you know, five years after Ackman launched his uh, assault, uh, Truth Prevailed, his disastrous bet against Herbalife Nutrition ended in 2018 when he basically threw in the towel after a long and unglamorous battle where he lost more than a billion dollars going after Herbalife. And um, unfortunately, despite Ackman's exit in roughly 2018, uh, he has not disclosed his connections to betting on zero or amended his unfounded attacks against the company or the direct selling uh, business model of, of Herbalife. Uh, number two, we all remember during COVID-19, what did Bill say? Hell is coming. How Bill Ackman's TV interview tanked the markets and made him a cool $2.6 billion during COVID. So the billionaire hedge fund manager told millions of Americans in a 28-minute near hysterical you know, TV interview, you got to watch this, he said, the U.S., was underestimating the severity of the coronavirus crisis. It would kill millions of Americans and devastate the global economy, he said. And uh, we need to lock everyone down, get rid of this. So at the same time, Ackman, a well-known Harvard-educated hedge fund manager, had quietly placed a bet that the stock market would tank. And those bets made him a cool $2.6 billion. That's a near 10,000% return on his money, folks, on his $27 million stake. He's got a little clout in the media. He goes on TV and tanks the market and secretly bet against it. So nice job, Bill. Okay, so what does Bill want now? Why does he, why does he want to raise rates? Bill says, take a look at this. The bottom line, we think the Fed should taper immediately and begin raising rates as soon as possible. We are continuing uh, to dance while the music is playing. And it is time to turn down the music and settle down. Wow, that's just, that's poetic. So, uh, you know, this is my take, folks. I, I find it interesting what makes the news these days. For example, in this instance, it's probably because Bill Ackman heads Pershing Square Holdings, which has over 13 billion assets under management. He's got some clout, had some success. And apparently when you are rich and powerful, very rich and well-connected, more importantly, and you meet with central bankers to tell them how to do their job, it makes for headline news. You know, it makes for headline news. And this, uh, you know, this does not, uh, you know, constitute investment advice, but Ackman, he tweeted, as we have previously disclosed, we have put our money where our mouth is and hedging our exposure to an upward move in rates as we believe that a rate, uh, a rise in rates could negatively impact, uh, you know, his equity portfolio. So, 
why does this matter? The short answer, the short answer, it really doesn't. But the real interesting thing is the fact that these types of stories make for headlines uh, and the broader picture being what it says about the state of our society overall, in my opinion, under, you know, understandably so, being a billionaire has perks, of course, absolutely, such as celebrity status and maybe even a cult-like following. But remember, there will always be billionaires and ultimately there will always be Bill Ackmans running around the world who become a winner after a series of entrepreneurial risk, and I, and I admire some of the risks he's taken, uh, paid off in his favor. But the real mystery lies in wondering what Ackman's success has to do with knowing when the Fed should raise rates. Does he have inside info? How one individual could be so close to the New York Fed such that they might be privy to information the public doesn't have or in a position to influence the Fed in a way that few could ever dream um, is also intriguing, very intriguing. It's unclear who directs monetary policy in America at this point. Is it a hedge fund manager? But what is, uh, is clear is that the, the slate is to protect those most closely connected to the Fed first. First. They get first, first play. So if Ackman called out the system that allows him to meet with the, the New York Fed and possibly confirm a rate raise prior to the official announcement, that would have made for a better news story, yet he may feel no desire to help society at large, you think? So, uh, you know, it speaks to the system we are, you know, we are currently in, folks, that a billionaire should know when it's time to raise rates is just as problematic as a handful of central bankers knowing when is the right time to raise the rates. You know, we're, we're stuck in a, you know, a predicament of having planners who are supposed to know or having global elites who, you know, basically what instruct the planners because they somehow know the answers for them. Uh, you know, you have the, you know, you have the guru, the pundits, the, you know, the well-paid bureaucrats out there, talking heads or even the billionaire, whether it's the economic calculation methods they possess or the high level knowledge over economic affairs. You know, it will always be absurd that society is moved by those, you know, who can hardly defend the reason for their beliefs. So Ackman addressed a concern regarding his stock portfolio the real problem is not whether the Fed should raise rates. Uh, the problem is that uh, the Fed has the ability to raise rates. <laughs> so, you know, I was looking at some other stuff. The Federal Open Market Committee, the FOMC, announced it will start tapering. As we all know, last week, it's asset purchases beginning in mid-November. So it cut the, the, the pace by $15 billion per month with 10 billion coming from uh, its treasury purchases and 5 billion coming from uh, its mortgage backed security purchases. Uh, the monthly purchases uh, beginning in mid November will be roughly uh, 70 billion in treasuries and 35 billion in MBS. So the Fed is trying to change uh, the word of the day from transitory as I've talked about for a year to now flexible. <laughs> it has flexible uh, average inflation targeting and is willing to be flexible with its asset purchases and even the, the data of, of liftoff for rates, depending on how permanent uh, transitory ends up being. So, you know, the Fed did not uh, rock the boat on this one. It, it was fairly well telegraphed that the Fed might do, and they did what most people expected by announcing you know, 15 billion in, in tapering and still folks still leaving interest rates at 0%. So the bottom line is time is here to taper bond buying, but they're not going to hike the rates. Give them some credit. Pershing Square is up 15.7% gross in 2021, 12.2 net fees this year, lagging the S&P 22.5% return according to company statements. So 
That comes after a stellar two 2020 during which uh, the fund returned 70.2% on the net. The firm has uh, attracted about 1.3 billion of additional assets this year that great Betty did during coronavirus. You know, Bill, maybe you should just monitor trend lines and uh, like some portfolio managers do that are running 15 to $20 billion and pick stocks for the long term and instead of shorting and going on TV because you got some clout as a billionaire and say erroneous things and all of a sudden you make yourself a cool 2.6 bill in your cronies. Hey, I get it. You're in a position. So you have some celebrity status some clout and you can go on TV and disrupt the markets. But uh, is that really stock picking, man? So, but hey, hats off. Bill's, if you look at his career, has done some, some, you know, calculated entrepreneur risks and entrepreneur at heart. Hey, smart guy. Uh, but you know, some of those things are concerning there when you look at the, the, the checkered history, but the fund is doing very well. Um, but now he's uh, meeting with the central bankers. That's, you know, hedge fund managers, direct, direct line to central bankers who's setting the monetary policy in this country. That's what's concerning to me. Uh, you know, someone's got so much assets under management and they get a, a free ticket to access the New York Fed's office and sit down and have Danish and coffee and give their opinion, put a PowerPoint presentation together and tell the uh, central bankers how we need to set monetary policy in the United States. Uh, what do you think of that? I, I, I'm a, it gives me a little heartburn. So I thought it was an interesting story. Came out the other week and uh, you know, I've been following it for a little bit. Just wanted to talk about it. Have a great week, everyone. And uh, be productive, be kind. Have a great holiday. Take care.